From our primary school days, you will recall learning about the water cycle. Water from the sea, oceans, rivers, and lakes evaporates, forms clouds, and flows back to the sea. Since less than 1% of the Earth's water can be used for our daily lives, we need to protect it while it is available. However, water availability is not the same around the world. Some areas have more water, and the price of water is more expensive in certain areas than others. As such, the relative costs of water in Africa, in particular, is much more expensive than on other continents. South Africa is no exception to the continent. In South Africa, water is not abundant, with an average rainfall that is just over half the world's average. We have very few rivers or aquifers, no natural lakes, and it is not uncommon to have frequent droughts. Because of this, the National Water Act is an important piece of legislation to manage our water resources. Different users have different water needs, and it is up to the department to regulate how the water is distributed, treated, and used. A second piece of relevant legislation is the Water Services Act. This helps municipalities in their role to provide water to communities, as well as look to the interests of consumers. While two types of water are going to be important, wastewater, discharged into the environment, and drinking water, it is important for both that certain water quality characteristics are checked. These include chemical, biological, and physical characteristics. The government sets limits as to the quality of water. As an example here, wastewater discharge limits stipulate the pH, COD, coliform levels, as well as various chemical limits that need to be met. But what is so important about these characteristics and limits? Water is able to hold a certain amount of gas. If there is a lack of dissolved oxygen in the water, we are left with an anaerobic environment where fish could die and algae can grow. The amount of dissolved oxygen in the water is a function of the temperature and pressure and can also be affected by the concentration of dissolved solids in the water. Biological oxygen demand is a measure of how much oxygen is required for microorganisms to decompose the organic matter in the water. A low BOD shows an absence of contamination, while the high BOD can be harmful if discharged into other water bodies. While this test can theoretically be run over an infinite amount of time, it is typically limited to five days at 20 degrees Celsius in the dark. The test can be run seeded or unseeded, with the BOD5 calculated from the initial dissolved oxygen, the dissolved oxygen after five days, as well as dilution factors and DO values of the seeded waters if needed. The chemical oxygen demand is the total amount of oxygen required to oxidize any organic matter. Unlike BOD, this method does not distinguish between biodegradable or non-biodegradable matter. Solids are anything that is left over after evaporation at 103 degrees Celsius. These can be dissolved or suspended solids, organic or inorganic. Solids that are smaller than 10 to the minus 6 millimeters are classified as dissolved, while particles that are bigger are classified as colloidal or suspended. Those that are as large as 10 to the minus 2 millimeters are classified as settleable. Suspended solids are undesirable in water as they can be a food source for microorganisms and lower the amount of light passing through the water. Should the solids settle, they can cause deposits covering the habitat of aquatic life and fish and form a sludge. Solids in the water could also be organic. These are also undesirable as they will result in increased microorganism activity, which could lead to anaerobic conditions. Organic matter could also be toxic from industrial or chemical wastes. While not organic, heavy metals are included at this point, as these two are undesirable can be toxic and can upset biological treatment processes. Carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus are essential nutrients for biological growth. However, when they are released into wastewater streams, they can result in the growth of undesirable organisms, which can lead to oxygen depletion and anaerobic conditions. The presence of certain chemicals can also be an indicator of pollution. Microorganisms in water can be a good thing, but this is not always the case. Some pathogens can transmit diseases, and large numbers of organisms can also be a sign of recent pollution.